All right, so in this lesson, we're going to learn about a derived table. Now, of course, this whole course is about subqueries, so what the heck is a derived table? Well, derived table is really a subquery in the from clause. So let's dig into what this really looks like. All right. So drive table, as I said, is a subquery in the from clause, and it acts as a table since its results are in the form of rows and columns. And this is kind of a new thing because, you know, all, all along I've been kind of beating into everybody's head, you know, subqueries work if you got a single result coming back. And really the, the idea here is, is that when you use a subquery in your select statement, the result that's coming back from the subquery needs to match what your select statement's expecting. So if you're using an expression and it expects a single value, well, your subquery should be returning a single value. Well, now that we're working in the from part of the um, select statement, guess what? It expects a table and so it's so cool. So our subquery can return table and that's what we're gonna do. So the drive table is gonna be the subquery and let's just see how this works. So here's the anatomy of a drive table. In fact, here's, here's the query all, all ready to go, and I'm gonna describe all the pieces right now. So here we go. So the drive table's circled in blue, all right? And like every other subquery we've all talked about, it's enclosed in parentheses. So you see the parentheses right here? That means everything inside is a subquery. So the select order date, round, from, customer order, summary, group by, that's the subquery. All right, alias columns. Totally, the reason you wanna do that is notice how weekly sales here is being pulled out. So we're literally going to reference the columns from our drive table on the outside of our query. So it's gonna be so important that you alias your columns so you can reference them in your outer query. And then the other thing is, is that all derived tables must have a table alias. And there's no exception to this. The database management system is going to gig you every time you don't do it. And it makes sense because it needs to know what it's called. So when we drive a table, we need to give it a name. All right, so let's go in. Let's look at some examples, see how we can use this, because this is actually a really powerful technique. And I'm going to show you how you can get around some limitations that SQL throws up against you. So before we get too much further into our drive tables, let's just start slow and just run a query to get our feet wet with what we're dealing with here. So I'm going to run a query on customer order summary and it's going to bring back the order date and weekly sales. Simple enough. And now we're going to use this as a drive table. And I'm just going to show you how we can essentially select this as our part of our from clause. So let's just do select order date and then weekly sales. And I'm going to say from. And then instead of a table name, I'm going to put a parenthesis to signal that I now want to start a subquery, which is this drive table right here. And then I'm going to put an alias on it. And now it's run. And I get the same thing, right? Because this really is the query that's running. And then it's coming back as D. And I can then select the order date or weekly sales. Now, if I called this weekly sale and I ran it, notice how I get invalid column name weekly sales because it doesn't know what this is. Because it can't resolve weekly sales because the columns coming back from my drive table are order date and weekly sale, right? So I'm going to change it back to the way it should be. And the other thing is, is these really can be um, preceded with the alias if I really wanted to make it clear. Because that's what the alias table name is. So let's talk about something that drive tables are good at helping us with. So here I have the sum of weekly sales and in many cases you may want to let's say get the average of that. If we didn't know about drive tables you may go well can I just do the average of the sum 
and, uh, and to make this look better, the easy, more direct, I'm going to say I, I got the sum here. So let's just do the sum. All right. And then, I, and then you might say, like, well, can I just take the average of this? And so you might say average, right? And that would give me the average of the sum. Fair enough. But it says you can't perform an ag aggregate function on an expression containing an aggregate or a subquery. So SQL just does not let you do something like this, where you can take the average of the sum. But you know, really what I want to be able to do is to take these values right here and then get the average. So how can I do that? Well, it's actually look, looking at me right in the face now that I know how to use drive tables. What I can do here is actually now, if I want the average of these weekly sales, is I can come in here and say, well, I got the list of weekly sales coming through. So why don't we just take the average of this, right? And then I can call this average weekly sales. And when I run this, now what I, I'm getting is the average of the sum of the week, weekly sales. I guess that's a broad, better way of saying it. it's the average of the sum of the weekly sales, okay? Um, so let's just write this number down 290 so that you guys can understand what's going on here and then I'm going to run the inside query and if I select that and if you look over here see how it says average 290.716 that matches my 290 so that's the average so this is a workaround. I, I was able to do an aggregate inside my, my table here and then pump the result out as another table, which then my select statement was able to use. So that's a good example of being able to use a drive table. Now in the next lesson, we're going to take it a step further and we're going to learn how you can take, um, two drive tables and join them together, which is pretty cool because then you're able to take uh, results that you create and and then use those to join together. And that allows us to get around even other limitations. So see you in the next lesson.